You got this. Hi, I'm Chef Nini Nguyen, and today I'm going to talk to you about beef roast. Now, when you go to the butcher, it might be a little bit confusing with all the different types of cuts and you might not know how to prepare them. But today I'm gonna to show you a few tips on how to pick out the best roasts and how to prepare them when you get them home. So I have seven cuts of beef and I've separated them to two different categories. We're gonna cook some hot and dry and some wet and slow. So let's start with the hot and dry. What fits into this category? This is a standing rib roast. This is the most dramatic of roasts, and the rib roast is a more expensive cut. The bone being French is also a nice dramatic touch that makes this just so much more special. When I say marbling, I really mean all of the fat that grows in between the meat muscles. So you could really see it here. Not a lot of meats will have this beautiful marbling. And what happens when you roast this is that fat melts and it makes the, that meat so juicy. Now, the ribeye roast here is essentially the same as the standing rib roast except it doesn't have the bone. It has the fat cap, which you want to roast on top, but it also has this beautiful marbling inside, just like the standing rib, that's going to also melt and keep it super, super juicy. So a single muscle, when you think of beef, I automatically think of beef tenderloin, something super tender and something kind of lean. Another alternative to beef tenderloin would be the eye of round. If you could see here, you can see it's one long muscle that's quite lean. Now, this is going to be really, really good and nice and tender when you roast it dry. It doesn't have the marbling, but there is a fat cap. You always want to roast with the fat side up. Because this is a lean meat, you want that fat to drip and base our roast as it cooks and really get that nice crust that you want in your roast. So let's talk about these tougher cuts that need a little bit more love. The best way to prepare these cuts are going to be wet and slow. And what do I mean by that? We wanna braise these meats. We want to stew them. Now, why do I wanna cook it this way? It's because a lot of these cuts are going to have connective tissue. And what happens when you braise or stew these cuts of meat is the connective tissue melts and makes this meat super tender. So let's talk about the top round. Now the top round consists of two Two muscles that I could see quite visibly and this is what you can see at the butcher a line of what looks like fat but when you pull it apart just like this you can see that there are different connective tissues that are in between the muscle if you were to cook this dry and hot and fast it's gonna be really really tough the top round is what we think of as the classic pot roast but it's so versatile as long as you cook it wet low and slow in the oven, it's going to be juicy. So another cut that's really great for the low and slow cooking is the rump roast. And I'm gonna show you here, this one is a great example of the different types of connective tissue that you might see when you're picking out your meat. This one has some, what we call like sinew and fat and also a little bit of silver skin. Now this is all worked within the meat, but again, when you cook it low and slow, all of that kind of disappears. This is really great for marinating and roasting. And this is what we think of when we think of roast beef. So now let's talk about the top sirloin. Now this, you can really see the different muscles in between. And what butchers usually do is they tie it all together. You could definitely cut this up and stew it or slowly cook it whole just like this. But all of this connective tissue again, it's gonna disappear. Last but not least, we have the chuck roast. Now, this is a prime example of the multi-muscles in one roast. You can see the different muscles 
kind of partitioned with the layers of fat. And if you really digged in, you could see the connective tissue. All of these nooks and crannies are great to kind of stuff with garlic or whatever flavors that you really want. And this is not to be confused with the chuck eye, which is basically the tail end of the ribeye. The chuck roast is a great example on how you don't have to spend a lot of money to make an exceptional meal. And there you have it. All you have to remember is hot and dry or wet and slow, and you'll have a perfect roast every time.